uh, welcome. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. While we wait for the webinar to start, uh, please share you uh, with us where you're from using the chat function. Welcome Anik from Jamaica and Danko from Zagreb. We have someone from Alameda, California and someone from Montreal, Canada. Welcome all. Uh, we have someone from Ukraine. We're just going to give it a couple more minutes before we get started to make sure that uh, everyone is online. Hello, Giuseppe from Italy and Mihail from, oh, sorry. Oh, it's going pretty fast. Hello to Kerry from Johnson City and Shafali from Sheffield in the UK. Hello, Linda from Kentucky. Happy morning to you as well. Hello, Rudy from Belgium. And Muluken from Ethiopia. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. Okay, so why don't uh, why don't we get started uh, with introductions? Um, I am uh, my name is Judy Ward, and I'm actually uh, talking to you today from Mississauga, which is located in Ontario, in Canada, and and very happy to be here as a part of the marketing team at IIBA. As you know, IIBA is an independent, not-for-profit professional association serving the global business analysis uh, community. A recognized thought leader, IIBA is dedicated to elevating the discipline of business analysis. We provide our global community with relevant tools, resources, and networking opportunities to take control of your career. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started today. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A section. Uh, in your webinar controls at the bottom of your Zoom window. And today's webinar will be recorded and will be available on our, our, our IIBA webinar archives page within 10 days, 10 business days of this broadcast. Today's presenter is Ellen Mishra. He, uh, CB, CBAP, CBDA, CPOA, AAC, and CCA. Ellen is an author and co-founder of Adapted US Inc. He has more than 27 years of professional experience in business analysis, requirement analysis, agile software development, and management consulting. Ellen is the product owner for Succeed, which is Adapted's flagship learning management solution. And he has authored more than 20 books on business analysis and has trained more than 5,000 business analysts around the globe. Ellen has personally guided and helped close to 1,200 professionals to get IIBA certified, and he has conducted more than 300 workshops in business analysis, requirements management, agile software project management, and Six Sigma. Ellen is going to present today uh, five practical tips that will help you launch a career in business analysis. Over to you, Ellen. Uh, thank you, Judy. Uh, just a sound check. Uh, can you folks hear us? Ellen, I'm sorry. Uh, it looks like you are muted. We can't hear you. I'm not sure. 
not muted actually. I am on Okay, mute. sorry about that. Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me now? Judy? Yes, please go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you so much. I thought maybe I'm not audible. Okay, so welcome everyone to this uh, short webinar on how to launch your BA career. Thank you, Judy, for a kind introduction. I'm pretty happy to be back in the IIB webinar series. In fact, uh, one of the best things that probably has happened to the world of business analysis is IIBA. When I started my career way back in 1996, the term business analyst was not used. And we had very little help to progress in our career. Fortunately, today IIB is there and there's a lot of support available from the BA community around the globe, including many endorsed education providers from IIBA. And I happen to work with one of the EEPs, which is Adaptive US. So first things first, uh, let me congratulate you for taking time out today and joining this webinar. And trust me, the hour you spend with us can be a game changer in your career. And I will ask you some very simple questions during the training or during the webinar, and you will see what kind of impact it can cause to your career. And this is not a story of one to five business analysts. This is a story of thousands of business analysts who have trusted us and who have worked with us. So what are we going to cover today? So obviously, as the webinar topic says, there are five proven steps that I will describe to you. And how do you go about those five steps also? I will describe to you. I will be sharing a lot of links about useful resources that you can use to jump forward in your BA career. Or if you are looking to join a BA career, these resources can be very helpful. I would like to limit <clears throat> the webinar to say about 35, 40 minutes, not take too much time. Rather, answer many of your queries that you may have. So I have been lucky enough to interact with more than 10,000 BAs across the globe. Many of them are certified today. Many of them have found excellent jobs, um, great companies to work with. So I'm hopeful that I will be able to answer your queries. And I also happen to be possibly the first BA in the world to complete all seven IIB certifications. So I am in a reasonably good position to answer any of your queries regarding any of the IIB certifications that you may have in your mind. Then just a quick note, uh, there is an announcement about a webinar savings code, which we will display at the end of the webinar, and that will allow you an additional $100 discount on whatever current offers that we have on our BA Bootcamp product, uh, which is something that I will discuss about a means of achieving your BA career dreams. So just a quick note and a thank you note to IIBA. Uh, IIBA has been an amazing partner to Adaptive and as I said, this is probably the best thing that has happened to the world of business analysis. Today, we have amazing BA resources, a great BA community. We already have crossed 30,000 members at IIBA, which is a pretty large number. I wish we touch 100,000 numbers very soon, uh, given the fact that the interest in business analysis is growing day by day. All of you must be aware, um, BAs are in great demand as technology improves and technology allows companies to do a lot of things which they couldn't do before. And that's where the role of BAs come in. And some of you might already be aware, IIB has very interesting certification schemes. And in today's program, probably I will touch upon only one or two certification schemes, which is ECBA and possibly CBDA, uh, these two, because that's what most entry-level business analysts look forward to. Uh, some of them are more advanced level, not that they are not doable, uh, but it's good to talk about business analysis and data analysis. 
and what kind of support we can receive from IIBA and Adaptive. So this is just a quick poll and a question for you. So if make a wild guess, I'm not worried whether you get it right or wrong. What percentage of adaptive students are confident of performing the BA role? And I have given you three choice, four choices, 30%, 60%, 80%, 90%. So let's take a guess. What do you guys say? Okay. Uh, please don't write A, B, C, D. Better you write the percentage. That's something which I can read quite easily. I don't have to do a mapping. Okay, many of you have said 80%. Some have said 60. Some have said even 30%. Okay, no worries. Some of you have said 90%. Okay, just a wild guess, I believe, many of you. Let me show you the data that we got from an actual poll that we conducted on LinkedIn. So. The data is like this, and it's in the public domain. So I've given you the link, and you can go and verify the data for yourself. So 49% of our students reported a better role at their workplace. 58% reported higher salary within one year of completing the program. And 91% students reported higher confidence. In fact, I'm worried why 9% did not feel that way. Because I believe if you go through a structured training with a good organization and a good trainer, most likely we should reach almost 100%, barring a couple of odd incidents when people feel they're still uh, not so equipped to do the business analyst work. Uh, it's not rocket science. It does require some preparation, some practice. But many, many professionals from variety of backgrounds have become good business analysts. And it's always possible to learn a new skill if you're keen on learning a new skill. So please take out from your mind that I'm from a commerce background or I'm from a purchasing background or I come from not a science background. Can I become a business analyst? You, of course, can be as long as you learn the tricks of the trade. So, but that's important. And that sometimes takes six months for some people. Some people may, may take one year, but definitely within one year, you can learn and you can become a good business analyst. So I trust many of you may be completing your graduation course or post-graduation course and looking forward to a BA career or you could be actually working like a developer, tester um, in a marketing role or in an HR role, and you would like to migrate or perform the business analyst role. Or sometimes you could be actually a very seasoned professional who is interested in learning about business analysis and may move into be a career as well. Like I see a lot of bankers and insurance professionals being keen on becoming a business analyst. As a business analyst, you can impact the organization in a strategic manner. You can help the organization go much greater heights. So it's an amazing role to look at if you want to make a huge change in the organization. In fact, I have been working on uh, a product which could help propagate business analysis as a skill in every type of profession we look at, be it project management, be it strategic management, be it human resource management, in every role in any organization, people should be learning about business analysis, other than we, of course, business analysts who need to learn because we are performing that task. Okay, so as I said before, business analysts come from numerous educational and professional backgrounds. And I have seen them uh, and I'll give you a very nice example of a gentleman, and I will take you to his profile as well. Uh, he was one travel executive at some point in time. You can actually see his profile link as well, which I have given here. Let me see if I can go to his profile one second. Okay, it's here. One second, I'll just go to his profile link. I trust you still can view my screen. Okay, let me go to internet. 
okay and take you to his profile just to believe in yourself what is possible if you put in the effort and time so if you look at rakesh today he is uh, a product manager and delivery manager in a company called saber which is a very well known airlines organization and just look down and if you observe he was a senior executive in the travel function in 2013 and up to 2016 in fact if you observe so in 6 years he has moved from being a travel executive he became a consultant he became a lead business analyst he became a product lead and now he is a product manager and all that is possible because he decided to take training decided to get certified and that's what has propelled his career from a travel executive to a product manager in just about 6 years time and this is not one isolated example uh, in fact we have many examples like this uh, from our students and we try to put as many as possible uh, in a page called career transformation space as i have put here and you can go and check with these people you can reach out to them most of them are available on linkedin you can reach out speak to them take some feedback as well how did they move from a non ba career to a ba career of course some of them were bas as such not that all of them came from a non ba background uh, but there are quite a few who came from non business analyst background to business analyst career so what are these five steps that we talked and how are they placed so obviously step number 1 is to learn the fundamentals this is no brainer if you want to learn any subject any profession any skill you have to learn the fundamentals and we will see how do we learn the fundamentals then the role of a mentor in your ba career if you have a mentor your ba career can progress probably at 3 to 4 times higher speed compared to if you try to do it yourself so what you could achieve in a year without a mentor you possibly can achieve the same thing in 3 months with a mentor that's perfectly possible uh, because under a mentor you can kind of learn things much faster than you can do it yourself then the third point is to seek opportunities where we can apply our learning because initially people may not give us opportunity to work as a ba because they haven't seen us working as a ba so what are the opportunities that we can seek then the fourth thing i would always recommend to anybody who is trying to get into the ba role or who is trying to improve the ba career is to get certified so i'll talk to you about few certifications and of course iiba is an amazing organization to look at if you are looking at ba certifications then the last point especially for people who are not into the ba role but plan to get into the ba role is to master the job selection process because at the end of the day you probably have to find a job within your organization or outside your organization for a ba role so how do you go about getting that dream job so i'm going to explain each one of them in some detail not necessarily Uh, at great length because that will be probably a two day training uh, and we have just about 40 45 minutes in hand so step number 1 learn ba fundamentals and what is go into ba fundamentals so there are three important elements of ba fundamentals one is the business analysis process how to conduct business analysis activities second is behavioral skills and third one is ba tools so coming to the behavioral skills i trust many of you would already be possessing this behavioral skills behavioral skills are not unique to business analysis it exists if you are a tech writer if you are a designer you are a developer but as a business analyst certain skills become a lot more prominent because we as a role interact with lot of stakeholders we need to manage we need to move the stakeholders in a particular direction 
So obviously certain skills become a lot more important for us compared to a developer or a tester. Then let's first look at how do we learn about the first part, which is the business analysis process. So as part of business analysis process, we learn things like planning, we learn stakeholder management, we learn elicitation, that means how do we elicit needs from our stakeholders, how do we document needs, how do we manage requirements, how do we analyze requirements, and there is a whole lot of activities that we carry out as business analysts. In fact, we have a great resource at hand, which is the IIBA BA BOC, uh, which is called the Business Analysis Body of Knowledge. Many of you might have heard about BA BOC as well before. So at this point in time, let me make a request to all of you. If you are not a member of IIBA, please be a member of IIBA. Okay, because once you are a member of IIBA, you get access to BA BOC without any cost, which is one saving that you do. You get access to a lot of other standards as well lot of webinars, um, then you also get a significant discount on IIBA certification fees if you wish to pursue a certification, which we strongly recommend. And there is a reason behind it, which we will talk a little later. So the, the fees for becoming a member varies anywhere between about $90, no, not 90, I think about $55 for region three, going up to $139 in region one, uh, but it is completely worth an investment. And whatever little money you put into the IIB membership, it will come back to you 20 times more. So don't worry about that little tiny investment. This is going to come back to you in a humongous benefit uh, on the way very, very soon. Then obviously, uh, as part of being a business analyst, we are exposed to hundreds of techniques. So we are like the techniques guru of the world, in a sense, if you see. And in fact, I made an enumeration of close to 250 techniques that business analysts may use depending on the context. Um, it might sound like a lot, but many of the techniques are not very hard to understand. They're reasonably easy to understand and apply. And I tried to put 108 of them in a book uh, whose link I have given here, bitly.ba-techniques. And this particular book gives you 108 commonly used BA techniques, which I have come across in my BA career and by studying various standards and guidebooks and working with so many clients. So I've learned all these techniques and many of these techniques I have also applied at my workplace uh, because I also work as a BA. It's, uh, I am a practicing BA for adaptive and I also have consulted more than 25 clients in the business analysis space. So I got the opportunity to use many of these techniques as part of my work career. So some of you might have heard these techniques. It's not that the techniques are completely unique to BA area, but they are a lot more needed. Like many of you might have drawn mind maps. Even today I see my daughter drawing mind maps for her schoolwork. Uh, then there is SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, which some of you might have heard. There is RACI matrix, there is root cause analysis, there is process modeling, there is process analysis. So hundreds of techniques that we have and remember, these techniques are extremely useful to solve problems. And as BAs, we are constantly expected that we will solve problems for our organization or for our client. That's what we are trying to do. So wherever there's a problem, we investigate why the problem exists, what is the root cause of the problem, and how do we fix that problem. At the same time, we also look at opportunities that is coming up in the marketplace, and how does the organization take benefit of those opportunities? I actually love techniques in a sense because I have been exposed to so many of them over a period of time. Then comes the BA tools, and this can be a huge help when you are looking for the job for the first time. Because most organizations today have become quite a reasonably well technically updated. 
uh, when I started my career, I don't think I remember using any of these BA tools except MS VCO. I think MS VCO existed long, long back, and we used to draw certain diagrams using MS VCO. But other than MS VCO, most of the tools didn't exist. Uh, but gradually, over a period of time, companies have invested and companies have come up with great uh, BA tools. And one of the very popular BA tools is Atlassian Jira, uh, which is probably almost now a de facto standard in many small, medium, large companies uh, to manage their requirements and projects. Uh, Confluence is again a great tool for writing uh, because as BAs, we are supposed to describe processes. We are supposed to describe business rules, so many things, user interfaces, and Confluence comes into play there. Then there's a technique or tool called Balsamic, which is a prototyping or diagramming tool for user interfaces. There are multiple business process modeling tools, and MSVCO continues to be popular because it is part of the Microsoft Office suite. So the good part is uh, we at Adaptive give you access to these tools. We also train you on these tools as part of our product called BA Bootcamp, uh, because we believe tools knowledge becomes a differentiator when you are going for an interview. Then, as I said before, behavioral skills are again important. And there's a lot of discussion about behavioral skills in BA BOC itself. So the good part about BA BOC is it talks about process and it also talks about behavioral skills. The only part it does not talk about is BA tools, um, which could be an addendum, but probably there being so many tools in the BA market, IIB would find it difficult to favor a particular company. And that's why probably they don't get into discussing any vendor specific tools uh, in BA BOC. Uh, but tools are available and good amount of learning content is available on internet and through training providers like Adaptive as well. Okay, so apart from the BA fundamental process, it's important, as I said before, get a mentor. A mentor can move your career journey at the four times speed, as I said. What you will do yourself in one year, with a mentor, you can do it in three months. Or what would have taken you two years, it will now take six months. That's what I have written here. And we also provide an expert mentoring guidance even after you get a job. Because sometimes uh, when you get into a job, you are not totally ready for the job. You do lack something. And there also we come in and we guide you at your workplace as well. Then the third point and a very important point is to apply the learning that you got either from a mentor or from studying the guides and going through a training. And how do you find opportunity to apply your learning? So if in your organization, you already have business analysts, there are two things you can do. You can talk to the business analyst to become a mentor to you. That's something which uh, if the other gentleman or lady agrees, that's a good point for you to shadow them when they are performing their tasks. Because if you go and participate in requirements solicitation session or modeling activities, then you will see how the business analyst is performing his or her role. And in the process, you learn as well. Another thing I could suggest to you is to, wherever you are working, if you're working, even if you're a student, look at some of the existing processes with the institution that you are associated with and figure out if that process could be improved by either looking at activities which can be eliminated, activities which can be automated. So look at opportunities to showcase your skills and keep it recorded as well, because this is something that you can showcase when you go for an interview. Then if you get an opportunity to volunteer for a nonprofit organization or something like that, you can do it. And a lot of times startups also may give you internships, maybe for six months or so. So pick up an internship role and then probably they will absorb you or that experience can be used for applying to other locations or other companies as well. Then the fourth point I want to talk is to get yourself certified. 
Some of you might feel certification is just a piece of paper. Uh, it's quite theoretical in knowledge. Possible, I'm not denying to some extent, but they independently validate your knowledge. And when an organization is trying to hire a business analyst, they would like to see if you know the subject, if you know the vocabulary, are you familiar with the tools, processes, and are you committed to that profession? So when you get certified, you are showing your intent that I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to become a good business analyst. And these are very positive indicators for any hiring organization. And in fact, we have seen and we have got messages from our students as well uh, that certified professionals are more likely to get the job. And especially we saw during this COVID pandemic situation as well, uh, some of our students lost jobs because they were in the aviation sector or hospitality sector, which were devastated actually. In, in a sense, all of you know the, the flights were canceled for so many, so many months, countries' borders remained closed and the airlines companies had no choice but to let go people because there was no business for them. And in this situation as well, the certified people got their jobs pretty much quickly compared to those who are not certified. And trust me, and you can verify it with IABA as well, certifications can be door opener for you. They may not make you succeed in the interview unless you understand the process, you have the right knowledge, but at least your CV will get shortlisted for interviews. That itself is a huge uh, benefit that you can receive by getting yourself certified. Then the last point I would like to discuss is to master the job selection process. Because at the end of the day, we are looking to start a new career as a business analyst. So what are the two important things that we should keep in mind? One is to get a professional CV written. Unfortunately, I still see people who do not write a proper CV. Uh, they're not careful about writing what they know. Uh, they think it's not worth writing. They have spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes, formatting error. So many things still people make mistake in spite of having wonderful tools, wonderful CV writing software, still people are making mistake, which is unpardonable. You can create amazing CVs today for free. And in the past, we would have paid an expert writer to do it. So please pay attention to your CV uh, and get it written very well. You can do it yourself and get the CV reviewed by a couple of your friends to see if the CV seems interesting for a hiring partner. Then another important thing I would always say, today LinkedIn has actually become the CV repository of the world. So there are 700 million professionals on LinkedIn and people are observing each other on LinkedIn. So if you create a good profile on LinkedIn, you participate in LinkedIn BA group discussions, somebody is going to observe that this person is actually keen on performing business analysis and many of them could be in a managerial position to hire. So if they find that you are interested, you are knowledgeable, you have been certified, most likely you may get a call from the hiring agency as well. Then the second part is also being very thorough with the interview process. And it's actually a long process. It might appear like a 30 minute or one hour discussion with the hiring manager, but the whole process may be two to three months for you in terms of starting with the CV writing, keeping all your credentials right, keeping your work experience right, showing your abilities on the tools. So many things you have to do to get yourself shortlisted for the interview and do well in the interview. So doing well in the interview is again another activity that you need to learn and people who understand how to manage an interview process are likely to succeed in the interview. So there is a 
passive way of participating in an interview. There is an active way of participating in an interview. So this is something again uh, we teach as part of our mentoring program because we know people are going to get called for interviews at certain point in time and they should be fully prepared to take advantage of that situation. Good, coming to a little bit about uh, how we can assist you in your BA career journey. So let's take a quick look. One is what we provide as an entity organization. We provide extremely high quality content on business analysis. Uh, the content is a simplified version of BA Park, uh, simplified version of IIBA documentation. Uh, we also have a lot of templates created for you, which you can use it as part of your learning process and actual work. Uh, we do provide you with expert mentors who can guide you uh, with the BA process, uh, BA knowledge, interviews and everything. Then we support you. Sorry, I think it keeps jumping up. Uh, let me stay here for some time. And we support you till you find a new job, till you get certified and ultimately put you to whatever networks we have in terms of finding a new role for yourself. Then as I was talking about this particular program called BA Bootcamp, and as you can see here in the bootcamp, you get 48 hours of live training. So that's a lot of training that you get on BA concepts, BA process, and it also enables you for the entry level certification in business analysis, which is called ECBA certification. That's mostly apt for somebody who is really getting into the BA profession for the first time. Then we also cover you agile BA concepts because that has become very popular around the world. Uh, we also give you access to the BA tools and we train you, as I said, Jira, Confluence, Balsamic, MSVCO, Bizazi, BPM, all these tools we teach. Uh, we also take you through resume and interview preparation process. And we also give you a large number of templates which you can learn. Not all of them you have to learn. Some of them are for actual work, uh, but at least we would expect you to learn about 20 to 25 key templates that you will find it useful to explain things to your uh, hiring manager and use at your workplace as well. So this is something that we offer on all our certification trainings. Uh, so whenever the program is instructor-led, uh, all our trainings come with 100% success guarantee, 100% guarantee to run, and a 100% money back guarantee as well. As of now, we have close to 1,400 IAB certification uh, completed. We are hoping to complete 1,500 by the time we complete this year. So these are my colleagues who would be interacting with you uh, as and when you decide to learn with us, um, you see me in the center. Then my other colleague, Laura Patton, uh, she was actually the chairperson for the BA Bob authoring team and as well as PMI PBA authoring team. So you can imagine her stature when two competing bodies like IIBA and PMI both agree to work under her leadership. Uh, Victoria happened to be the director for IIBA Europe till last year. This year, she is pursuing her doctoral program. That's why she has taken kind of a sabbatical. Um, then Laura McCoy, again, a very active volunteer for IIBA and an amazing trainer as well. Uh, Tom happens to be our colleague who teaches mostly the non-core certifications, which is CBDA, CC. CBDA, CPOA, CCA, and AAC. <coughs> Quick feedback about our program. And you will actually find 500 plus of them if you go and look for an internet on our website as well. And as I said, these are all people whom you can reach out on internet and YouTube, preferably LinkedIn, because that's where most professionals are there. And you may find somebody from your neighborhood as well. Given the fact that there are already so many of them around the globe, somebody will be close enough to you.
Then a couple of good resources that you can download and use it for your benefit. Uh, we do have a BA career guide, which speaks a lot about how to become a BA. Some of it I actually explained to you today, uh, but the career guide is a lot more exhaustive and it CBA, CBDA or AAC. If somebody is interested in data analytics career, maybe CBDA is a good option to follow. Uh, if you are looking at requirements analyst kind of a role, ECBA is a good program to look at. If you are seeing some opportunity in product analysis, maybe CPOA is a good standard to look at. But in general, I would recommend two standards, ECBA and CBDA at this point in time. Maybe later on you can do others. Uh, as I said before, uh, here is the code for you. This code is save 400 and that will give you a $400 offer on the BA bootcamp. So you can go and register for yourself. And this offer is valid for one week from today. So as I said, we work very closely with our students and that's how we have built such a good reputation in the marketplace um, and an amazing fan following as well as you can see. Um, and we guarantee that if you work with us sincerely, you're going to have an amazing BA career. And in fact, from next year onwards, we're going to work very closely with our past students as well to see how do we help them move forward in their existing careers. So thank you for joining in the webinar. And as I said, uh, here is the email address, uh, info at adaptiveus.com, uh, which is monitored almost 24 by seven uh, by different teams around the globe. So if you have any questions, you can always uh, send an email to info at adaptiveus.com, or you can also call us on our toll free number, uh, which is plus one eight seven seven eight seven two two eight six zero. So that's about from my side. I would be happy to take the questions. So Judy, how do we take the questions now? Um, well, we have about 20 questions uh, that have come in through the Q&A uh, tools. So uh, I'm just going to quickly take you through a few. Sure. Um, and uh, so here's one from Anna Duncan. She mm -hmm. says, I am a Java mm -hmm. developer for nearly 20 years. I want to become mm -hmm. a business an a business analyst. However, uh, on interview, they tell me I don't have experience as a business analyst. I have done several courses on Pluralsight, Pluralsight and Udemy. How can I become overcome this barrier? Okay. So I think sometimes we don't say that we have business analyst experience. If you have been a developer for 20 years, you would have definitely done a reasonable amount of business analysis. I have no doubts about it. Uh, one of the things that you could do is to take a look at IIBA certification because through the IIBA certification, you are certified as a business analyst, uh, which is a good indicator for the company to say, that you actually know business analysis. And I would always suggest that uh, do a matching between what a BA does as per IIBA and see what among those activities, which activities you have already done for a reasonable amount of time and showcase that during the interview or discussion, saying that out of the 30 BA tasks, I have done 20 of them in a reasonable time. So just because I'm called a developer, it does not mean that I haven't done BA work. A BA uh, work is performed by a developer, by a tester, by a project manager as well. So all of us do some amount of business analysis work, but just that as a business analyst, we do some of these tasks, lot more intensity. Yes, Judy. All right. So the next question that we have here is what's the difference between the ECBA and the CCBA? Okay. ECBA is meant for professionals who are reasonably new to the world of business analysis. That means you are a student, you have never worked as a business analyst, or you are a developer, you have not worked much on business analysis. That Then that's when we recommend ECBA. 
CCBA is for practicing BAs. That means you have been performing the BA role for some time. And if you have crossed two and a half years of BA experience, then we recommend CCBA. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, there's a question here about your slides about mentoring. And this one is from Tamisha. And she asks, can you explain by example how a mentor can help beyond explaining BA tasks and skills? How do they really get involved to help someone trying to get a BA job or already in one? Ah, okay. So the BA mentoring is not only about explaining the tasks that we anyway do, but the BA discusses one in one on one with you. So the BA understands, the BA assists you to write a proper resume, the BA assists you to uh, attend an interview properly. And we actually have students who have been through this mentoring process and have found jobs with US government and many other organizations. So it's a very close monitoring work that we do with the students who become mentor. Of course, even for regular students, we do that, but the intensity of interaction with mentees are much more. So at least we touch best twice in a month. Uh, and that for an extended period, like six months to one year, we could work with the mentor, a mentee to make sure that the mentee is progressing in the right direction and finds a job for herself or himself. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we have questions from uh, Maria Jaffery. Her question is, if someone, uh, she actually has two questions. The first one is, if someone wants to learn business process improvement or business process management, apart from process modeling, what mm -hmm. else do they need to learn? Okay. Uh, there is process analysis, which they should learn uh, because Process modeling is the starting point, but process analysis you have to extend. Then you also have to look at BPR kind of initiatives. If you want to really look at uh, re-engineering the organization's processes, uh, so those kind of activities you can take up. Okay. And then uh, the second question that we have is, what is the difference between process improvement and process management, if any? Uh, process management is typically the broader umbrella that we use. Uh, process management would involve continuous monitoring of processes uh, to see if the processes are performing as per the organization's desired level of performance. And process improvements are carried out when you find a specific process is not performing up to your expectation. Okay, so certain processes you may leave it as it is because they don't need so much importance or they are they don't have strategic importance. You can let them run as they are running today. Some processes you may decide to outsource as part of your process management activity. Like say, for example, at Adaptive, all our accounting processes are outsourced because of particular reason, because accounting is a very specialized field to develop expertise in accounting is difficult and it's not critical to our business in the sense we don't make money by being good accountant or a good accounting company. So we leave it to an expert company which understands that domain and we of course pay a fee for that, but we don't want to do it because it's not core to our operations or to our growth story or revenue. So process management will look at all these aspects which processes are critical, what should be done in-house, what should be outsourced. Then those which you do in-house, uh, how many of them need improvement in a way? Like a lot of process improvements we do at ourselves as well. So one of the very recent process improvement activity we carried out at Adaptive was to automate our quotation management process because we were spending good amount of time, money, we were making mistakes. Uh, in the quotation process. So we created an application and now the application is being used by the sales team uh, to create quotation in a much more effective and quick manner. 
Cool. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we do have a couple more questions. We just still have a few minutes left on our webinar time. Uh, Tiago Silva asks, what do you consider being the most useful BA templates and frameworks? Okay. There are many frameworks in BA world. Um, one of the important frameworks that I follow is called the process classification framework from APQC. Um, then there are so many techniques people use, like uh, say for software development, I follow generally Scrum guide and framework. Um, then if you look at templates, uh, the traditional templates that we used, the software requirement specification template, business requirement specifications template, uh, those two templates are very vital. Uh, today, of course, we have moved more to an theme, epic, acceptance criteria, those kind of templates, which have become a lot more popular today. Okay. Uh, let's have a, uh, another quick look here to see. Um, there's one here from Karthika saying, what is the key term to understand the requirements from a stakeholder? I didn't get the question very well. What is he trying to ask? What it, it looks like the answer could be elicitation, but what is the key term to mm -hmm. understand the requirements from a stakeholder? Uh, elicitation. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, and then can you provide additional tips on how to find BA roles or job postings that are ideal for someone who is in a non-BA job to pivot into? Of course, uh, I think uh, one good thing has happened at IIBA. Some of you might have uh, observed. I think, <laughs> Judy, you may be better to answer than yes. uh, the so it's, job board. Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, the Career I Center, guess. thank you so much for uh, for sharing the 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 IIBA website. We did launch this Career Center um, uh, job board quite recently, and it is um, a, a membership benefit, uh, but uh, it is available and uh, it has been very recently launched. So thank you so much, Alain, for sharing your screen and, and, and showing it. Yeah, and I trust there are more than 10,000 BA jobs published on the site itself. So, so it's a great uh, move by IIBA uh, to help the community where you find the location. Um, and the good part is now locations are becoming little less relevant because a lot of organizations are open to look at people who are in the same time zone. Even if you are a little bit adjacent to the time zone, they're still okay. Um, so you don't have to strictly go by location. You may be able to apply to the nearby locations or locations in the same time zone, uh, you may be able to find opportunities there as well. That's right. All right, and then maybe just one final uh, question here. If you have no computer science degree, is contracting the best route to enter uh, the business analysis profession? I don't mind, it's okay. Um, if you are finding a contract role, take it up. D don't be worried. I, mean, I always believe if you are capable and you do a good job, companies will hire you. Companies are looking for good people. It, it's not that uh, companies are not looking for people. Like you are looking for a job. On the other end, the companies are also looking for competent BAs. So it's a good match. It's not a demand or a requirement only from your side. It's a requirement from company side as well. Okay. And then one last one here from Maria Jaffrey. Uh, what is the more effective way to find a BA job through advertised jobs or through hidden job markets via networking? Um, I think networking works very well uh, because if you happen to know a BA leader in a company, and the company has a requirement, it's a lot easier to connect. Uh, so that's why I give a lot of importance to LinkedIn uh, because when you participate actively on LinkedIn, people are observing you. You may not be aware that somebody is observing you, uh, but they observe your intent, skill, knowledge, interest, 
all that comes out in, in your interaction on the LinkedIn. There are a lot of LinkedIn physical events as well today. Um, so do network. That's one of the best way to find a job. Advertised jobs may be a little hard because so many people may apply for that advertised job. So a hidden job could be easier to get than an advertised job. Great. So I think that brings us uh, to the end of our time together today. I would like to uh, thank Ellen and uh, to be here and to share his in, uh, all of this uh, valuable information. Um, just a couple of reminders uh, that um, there's this uh, webinar today was recorded and the recording will be available on our website, uh, IIBA website within the next 10 business days. Um, if you have any further questions for uh, Ellen or for us, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can contact us either at events at IIBA.org or info are at, at IIBA.org. Um, thanks once again for being here. Thank you once again, Ellen. We look forward to the next time uh, that we'll be together. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so much, Judy. And I wish a good time ahead for all of you. And we are almost ending the year and you see there's a good offer from IIBA as well. You have a 20% off on exam fees. So if you are in a position to take advantage of that, please do take advantage of that. Um, other than the $400 offer that I spoke of, on all other trainings, we have a $300 offer as well uh, till the end of the year. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you so yeah. much, everyone. We'll see you at the next webinar. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.